Hi, good day. My name is Kawei. I'm called, I'm from Imaginables, um, and today we're gonna play around with some settings in Kura um, that you might find uh, useful. Um, so with with Kura, uh, with the Ultimaker tree, as you might uh, already know, uh, the Ultimaker tree is a dual extruder, and the unique thing about it is that um, you can now print with a uh, dissolvable material called um, PVA. Unfortunately, at the moment, PVA is rather expensive, and I reckon what the reasoning for that is, well, well, PVA is almost um, two to or, or even three times more expensive for um, more expensive than like regular PLA, um, and and I I reckon the reason for that is because um, until now there hasn't been um, um, a lot of demand for PVA and uh, there's only a few manufacturers in the world that actually pr can produce PVA because PVA is quite a unique process where um, there's a lot of uh, it's very humidity um, um, sort of uh, sensitive material so the equipment to uh, manufacture PVA is quite specialized so because of that um, PVA is rather expensive. Um, there's not much, I guess, there's not much competition in the industry because there's not much demand. But I'm sure, being Ultimaker, um, Ultimaker being um, one of the leaders in the industry, with the um, uh, yeah, release of Ultimaker Three, I'm sure the demand for PVA will increase quite dramatically, and you might see um, industry. Um, starting to compete for that share in the market for um, PVA. So, so I'm going to run through some tips where we can um, save on um, uh, save on PVA material, uh, but still have the full benefit of um, 3D printing with um, dissolvable material. So, in this example. We have just a simple T. Um, if you were to do a standard support, um, to now now I know um, that um, in this uh, when you're printing a model like this, you would lay it flat on its side rather than printing standing up. But this is just to purely show you the um, simplistically um, how how we can um, use PVA in the most economical way. So traditionally, if you were to use a normal 3D printer, you would have a lot of um, supports underneath the the arms of the T, uh, and the finish underneath that would be quite. Um, you would need to file, you know, sand it down to make um, a presentable uh, model. So red. So right now. Um, with the Ultimaker tree, I've selected um, with extruder one um, a red PLA. And extruder two, I've got PVA. So let's select print supports using PVA. It's going to quickly slice that and go to let's go layers. And you can see there's quite a lot of PVA just supporting that. Now, if we look down at the numbers here, it's quite dramatic. We've got 45 grams of PLA being used and 76 grams of PVA being used. So, um, yeah, um, the amount of material here is quite extensive. So, to perhaps reduce that, what you can do is go to Advanced. And then scroll all the way. Well, you might need to turn it on, but uh, all the way down to dual extrusion. So if this is if this um, options don't appear for you, um, you can click on this um, gear icon, the settings icon. So and you can select dual extrusion to turn on turn on these uh, settings here. Um, if you can't find it, just do a search dual extrusion, 
and that should come up. But it's turned on at the moment. So here um, we can select um, the build plate adhesion. Um, I think um, actually PVA is much better than PLA in terms of sticking. Um, the general support extruder, we've got it at uh, PVA. Now the support infill extruder, what we can do is actually change it to rate PLA. And then we allow for um, the support interface and the first layer support extruder to be um, natural PVA. Um, now I'll just explain that a little bit. I hope I can explain it. So let's go over to supports. So these are the settings for supports. There's quite a few. Um, for PVA, um, I generally would like would use um, zero um, support Z distance. So that's that means that um, the actual print is actually sitting directly touching on the supports, and there's no gap to allow for easy removal. With with PVA, you don't. Um, um, that's that's not an issue. Um, support in the x y distance you can um, is set to 0.8, um, but you can um, change that. Um, let's say you, maybe you want to have a bit more buffer between the support and the actual and the actual print material uh, print model. You can increase that. Let's say one mil, so the supports will be offset one mil from um, from the actual print model. Let's see, I'll show you again. This is a 3 mil. Just to show an example. Now you see that that gap has increased. We'll stick with 1 mil for now. And then by default, um, enable support interface will probably not be turned on. Um, you want to turn that on. And then here, this is where the magic happens. Um, support interface thickness. So this is basically creating a roof above your your supports. So these these are your supports. That zigzag pattern. But then as it just about to interface, it actually creates a roof on top of that. So this makes for um, a better platform for your prints to actually sit on. Now you can increase that. Um, by default, it's one. Um, if you want to make it easier to remove, you might want to increase it to say 1.5 or 2 mil. It'll make it. That'll make that interface much thicker. So right now, what it's doing is it's actually printing the roof as PVA, while the rest of it is actually PLA. We can see down below here the dramatic um, decrease that's ha um, that that we've um, made. So PVA, we've only we only using four grams of PVA. We are using more PLA, but PLA is much more cheaper. So that is so just by doing that, it's more economical. Um, What else? Um, the other thing, if you got a complex model or so, you might want to play around with the support bottom thickness. So that is uh, the bottom of the the supports. That that's the thickness of that. Um, yeah. So if you have a um, you know kind of very complex model, let's say let's say for example an E. Uh, uh, letter E, um, and the, and you don't want um, the supports actually damaging the surface on top of um, the E. Um, then you um, you can increase that thickness. So there you go. Um, just by a few clicks, you can save a whole lot of um, PVA, expensive PVA and um, print quite in economically. Now, I would recommend that um, you use this for quite large objects. Um, 
uh, with quite big gaps in between, uh, it, it makes it much more easier to remove. Um, if you were to use this technique on a very small object, you'll find that um, it'll be quite difficult to remove. So yeah, try and try for it's mainly more uh, for quite large uh, objects. Um, this um, PVA saving technique. Thank you. Hope you found that informative. Cheers.